when you're playing solo queue in Warzone, you really have to lead. You absolutely just have to be the leader of the team. So lead. I misspelled it, or I mean, I didn't even misspelled it, but my pen, my penmanship is terrible, but I am not kidding. When you solo queue in Warzone, the best thing you can do for your team is lead and call the shots. So we're going to go step by step from the start of the game all the way to the end on how you can lead your teammates. Starting off, we're going to begin with landing and looting, right? So when you first start up the game, usually you're going to have circles, you know, ending like this. Um, of course, sometimes they end up at Almazer City. Sometimes they end at airport. One that I've seen it happen a lot is where it ends like over here. Um, okay. So based on the plane landing as well, like let's say the plane landing is like this. So right now with all of this information, just by looking at this map, I would immediately understand that the middle of the circle where the game will probably end is somewhere around here. This is somewhere where the game might end. Said City, maybe a little bit more up towards Cave. And then based on the plane landing, based on the plane landing, there's going to be a lot of people landing at Observation. There should be a lot of people landing at Sarif. There's probably going to be a lot of people trying to stretch over and land at like Said City. And of course, there's going to be a few, you know, outliers probably landing at like Shireen Pass or maybe even airport. Right. Um, of course, there's also hydroelectric and then Rohan. But the big reason why I'm drawing all these circles right now is because there's a few outliers where you can see if we land like over at Quarry or if we land over at Port, we're not going to run into any gunfights therefore making looting up extremely easy for our team. Yeah, so, right, yeah, like this is the first example. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just like quickly make another example real quick, such as let's say that the plane is flying in like this and then the circle is ending somewhere up here. So it looks like the circle's gonna end at like Almazra City and based on this plane flying in, people observatory, people hydro, people are gonna be at Rohan, of course, people are gonna land at city, but the more I'm looking at this, oh wait, outlier, there's probably not gonna be people up here. You can land up here to loot safe. Um, in fact, I'll tell you right now, if you can land up here and loot up here, you're probably already guaranteed getting like maybe top 10 because no one's gonna be over here looting up. You're gonna get all the loot. And the best part of all is when you get all this loot, um, look at what happens when the gas starts closing. So when the gas starts closing, it's gonna close like this, right? And when you just loot it up all over here, guess what? You only have to focus on what's in front of you because this is all outside the map. The enemies can't be over here, right? Um, so tip number one, land pretty much away from where everyone else is landing. So in solo queue, you and your team can get a lot of good loot you guys are able to start going for kills. Yep. Now, loadout. right, right. Now that we have like loadout, now that we have all of our classes, what the heck should we start doing? Um, so I would say that the first two to three circles, so circles one to about three, I would say that's when you can start going for kills. So like, let's say you guys looted up everything over here. What you can then start doing is a strategy called fishing the circle or what Iceman Isaac calls is the pinwheel method. And all it is, is you're rotating on the outside of the gas. And the whole point of rotating on the outside of the gas like this is when the gas is pushing in, it's pushing all the enemies towards you. Now, there's another benefit to rotating on the edge of the gas like this, and it's the idea that because no one really should have landed out here, the people that did land out here probably aren't the best of players, and since they're getting pushed in, you're going to have an easier time playing and going for these gunfights. Because I'll tell you right now, most pro players, they're going in the areas where it's hot such as hydroelectric. Pro players love hydroelectric. You can soak up so many kills over there. So um, ideally what I'm showing is just by doing this rotation, you're gonna be able to find kills, get those kills, um, 
and ideally, you know, get maybe five kills per person. That'd be pretty awesome. Now, once we get to circles three to five, and now the game is ending more like this. So actually, let me let me keep the same color coat. So like now the circle is more like this for circles three and five. This is when I would say you can start playing for the win. And when you play for the win, we need to get back center circle. So literally, if you guys ended up over here, you guys can retrace your steps because all of this is safe. And then once you retrace all your steps, eventually you can get to high ground at one of these buildings. And then you just start playing for placement. Um, so yeah, that it, it's that simple. And also if you like, like this is being it safe. Retracing your steps is making sure you're safe where you don't run into any gunfights. But if you still wanted to run into gunfights while rotating, you could very well keep going in this direction if you wanted to. Yeah. Um, but again, it's solo queue. If you don't trust your teammates to win gunfights, definitely just you know rotate back and play it safe. Get to a building uh, where it's end game. And I do this around circles three and five. Okay. Okay. Cool. That has helped massively already. Awesome. I'm happy to hear that. I'm happy to hear that. And literally just in solo queue, this is how I'm able to pretty much at least break even, right? So when I play the game, I'm not losing SR that I invested. Um, and now the only thing I have to do is just clutch up, get to top 10, top 5, and now I'm going to be positive 30 SR. Um, and obviously if you can get a win... If you get a win, now you're going up positive 50, 100 SR, depending at what level you're at. Okay, cool. So that's the biggest thing of all is around just circle three. I always try to get to the end circle, but ideally circle three and five get to the end circle. Okay, cool. So now um, let's talk a little bit more about like the actual end game. So let's say we're playing at observatory and the game is ending at observatory, right? Yep. So what might happen is we understand that like circle five is probably like this and then circle six probably, actually circle five isn't that big. Circle five is more like this and then circle six is more like this and then circle seven is more like this. And then circle eight is usually over here. And then this is the end game. So this is circles uh, five through like eight, basically. And, and we're count silly question time. We're counting these, aren't we? When we hear the announcement of the gas moving, is that right? Yeah, you're always, yeah, great question. You're always looking at that timer, making sure, uh, yeah, uh, like that timer tells you when you need to rotate. So when you look up and it says circle three, you're like, oh, shoot, let's get to the end game. And then when you're when you're in the end game like this, I don't know if you guys are lucky, but I am always unlucky. Like I will get over here. I'll be like, cool, it's circle five. Oh, shoot, circle six pulled a little bit more towards over here. Okay, cool, we're still in zone. And then out of nowhere, circle seven and eight pull all the way over here, and I just get super unlucky. <laughs> um, this is where like if you're solo queuing end game is going to be freaking tough because if you just get unlucky where the circle pulls away from you there's only so much you can do uh, but let's talk about it so the biggest thing with leadership in the end game is just making sure you can try to get to high ground uh, and like the best building possible so when you're traveling over here and it's circle five you're going to want to try to get to high ground at like observatory. Um, and this is probably the best high ground there is, but there's also high ground over at this building and there's also high ground over at this building. So that's the first thing you should think about in circles five and eight as a leader. It's what is the high ground that will guarantee us the win um, the best way possible, right? So high ground, high ground, high ground. Just choose one. Obviously, this one's probably going to be very dangerous because there's a buy station there. So that may not be an option. This over here, I actually don't see anyone play high ground over here. So you very well could probably go there. And that's probably the best play to go. Um, one spot I almost always go towards is this high ground though, right here. 
Now, whenever you're in the end game and you need to just keep playing, it's all about being cool, calm, collected. That is the most important thing of all. Be cool, calm, and collected. And just figure out where are the rest of the enemies, right? And what I mean by figure out where the rest of the enemies are and being cool, calm, collected is when you're in the end game like this, you can literally create a quadrant in these end game circles and you can just have these quadrants and be like, where are the enemies? So like if we're in this quadrant, we can control this entire quadrant, right? So this entire quadrant can be ours because we have high ground on this building and then maybe we go to high ground on top of this mountain. We hold down this entire section, right? So now the other enemies, the other nine enemies must be in these other quadrants, right? Um, Absolutely. And, and of course, like, of course, if you guys are just really good and you guys have the best aim ever and you guys are able to slay out, maybe you guys can get control of this entire quadrant as well. And now you're controlling half of the map. All the enemies can only be in front of you now. And that's what I mean by being cool, calm, collected. It's just look at your mini map, understand there's four quadrants, control one of the quadrants. If you can control two, holy crap. If you control two of them, all the enemies are just in front of you now. Um, and the, the name of the game for this is like, we're not trying to necessarily get high kills. It's mostly just placement. Um, but when you are in a scenario like this, where let's say it's the end game, you have full control of these quadrants, Ideally, what's going to happen is you and your team, you're probably having a player on top of this mountain. You probably have a player on top of this dome. And then your third teammate is probably just supporting you um, all the way back over here. And just having, just having all this information where we know that we're completely safe from behind and we know that these enemies are over here. Like, I, I just want to point out, here's three of us. But like, what if there's an enemy team inside the buy? And then there's an enemy team inside of this building. And then there's an enemy team inside of this building. And then there's an enemy team down the mountain. Like, do you see how, like, all these teams are clustered up, yet we as a three are spread out? And when we're spread out like this in the end game, this is where it's just make the best rotation, right? So if the circle is ending over here, the best spot is probably maintaining high ground on this black X. So you would call out to your teammates, yo, guys, let's go kill these guys right here. And you guys would all fly out, kill this black X, boom, we get that kill. And then now we have full control. And then now it's like, oh, shoot, these two guys are fighting over here. And then there's a team solo over here. That's where you guys can decide to solo this team. You guys can kill this team. And now the last two teams are over here. They're all one shot. You guys can just push. Boom, that's the end of the game. Um, and I did it all in blue, so that was actually bad, but... <laughs> no, 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 uh, it makes sense, it makes sense. Okay, good. It actually, yeah, it does make sense, it's good. Uh, buy stations. Yes. Ask. We're looking for UAVs, um, self-revives. Uh, these are the best items to buy, aren't they? Yeah, um, UAVs, self-revives, and then, like, last resort, I'm always buying, like, an armor box or an ammo box if I need it. Okay, cool. Perfect. Okay, cool. So that is literally like beginning to end on like the whole strategy and how to look at the map. But now let's go a little bit more in depth for like team fights, right? So um, going back to this example, let me actually delete this uh, yellow line though. So going back to this example, we're like, we're spread out. We have a guy high ground over here. We have a guy high ground mountain. And then we have a high ground observatory. And then we know that let's say there's an enemy stuck inside of this building over here, right? When we have a setup like this, this is always like the ideal setup. And when you're solo queuing with your teammates, ideally what you want to do is you want to try to push up as close as possible to the enemies with high ground. So out of all these three X's, which one should you be? That's closest to the enemy with high ground. Observatory. 
Absolutely, observatory, this guy. And the reason why you wanna be this guy is because when you're at high ground and you're shooting at the enemies, you're getting damage down, you should be calling out to your teammates, yo, I got one cracked, yo, I got one down, push, 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 push. And the goal is because you're doing all the damage, all these enemies are busy looking at you, and this is gonna allow your teammates to ideally just get a free flank and uh, get the kills. So boom, and then boom. Um, as we can see, the enemies are focused on yellow, therefore our teammates should win the gunfights. Now, this is a very important part that a lot of people forget because they think, oh, cool, I got all the damage down, um, now my teammates are pushing up, I'm done. Wrong. When your teammates push up and they start shooting, this is when you need to either wrap around and flank them this way, or you need to wrap back this way and flank them this way. And the reason why is because your teammates are more than likely not going to win the gunfights. Uh, just like so, if you're in lower ranks, I never really trust my teammates to win the gunfights. Um, so you always want to be following up. And uh, what this is called is, or I guess not necessarily called, but the best way I can explain this is you're pushing up to the highest ground. You're anchoring with the high ground, you're getting damage down, you're baiting for your teammates, and then once your teammates start shooting, you go in for that final flank, and then boom, that's how you collapse on an enemy team. Cool. Cool. Yeah, and uh, let's like do another example, like, uh, like over here, yeah. So like over here, we can do another example where let's say um, there's an enemy team camping inside of I honestly see everyone either camp inside of this building or here. How about this? Let's let's make it with two teams. So this is, makes sense, right? I see a lot. Also, like the higher end streamers, they seem to finish on high ground a lot, and they'll be like, "Yeah, let's just stay here. Let's just stay here." And yeah, it makes sense now. Right. It definitely makes sense. So if I'm being realistic, the two high ground spots are right here. So like if you're playing against pro players and you're in like the high iridescent levels, they're more than likely going to be camping in this, in these buildings. And do you remember how in multiplayer, uh, we talked about how you can just like memorize the spots that everyone go towards and like, you can like, yes. right. Same thing in Warzone, where you can just memorize like, Oh, these guys are iridescent players. They're always going to play for the high ground. So they're usually going to rotate towards like these buildings. And even in these buildings, you can predict exactly what spots they're going to go to, which most pro teams, um, top 250, they always have one player on the roof, one player second story, and one player on the bottom floor. Just to have several different angles to fight from, uh, which we'll talk about that further. Uh, so uh, if there's an enemy team over here, enemy team over here, and like we're pushing in like over in this direction... Like, we have to first figure out who do we want to fight first. Um, and, like, can we somehow encourage a third party? Right? So, I'll tell you right now, um, the m biggest building with the most advantage are these guys right here. These guys are in the biggest advantage possible. Because they have the highest ground. So, we need to, like, prevent these guys from getting this high ground. So like one thing you can do with your teammates is you can say, guys, let's all triple push across over here. We get to this building. And then once we get to this building, we're going to just start throwing all of our grenades over at this building. And then we're going to shoot over at these people. And once we do all of that shooting, all of that chaos, all of those kill streaks, we're gonna put, pop smoke grenades and just double back. We're gonna go right back where we came from and then we're gonna wrap all the way around, and then now we're gonna get to high ground over here. Because what I'm trying to showcase right here is when you guys push across, and then you guys start throwing grenades and start fighting these people, these guys over here are gonna be like, oh my gosh, these guys just crossed, we can get a good third party here. So let's push across over here, and then let's try to wrap around, and we could probably fight these guys as well. And then these guys over here, they're thinking the same thing. They're thinking, what the heck? We see these guys pushing across. Let's fight these guys. And then let's try to you know, push across and, and slam these guys. And that's why I'm saying the second that you guys push over to this building and you start getting shots down, all you really need to do is obviously smoke this street, rotate back, and then eventually you're going to end up right at the best position possible, right here. 
And then this is how you're going to be able to just land on top and third party everyone. Which, again, you would have high ground, you would shoot the enemies, your teammates would be going for a flank, and then once they're flanking, that's when you follow up with a flank, right? Um, but I just tried to show you right there what to do in a scenario against two teams. I think I played Warzone once and got into the last 10, which is the best I've done, but that was before rank came out, and that was because I didn't have that many gunfights, if I'm honest. I found a good spot, and I kind of just hid out. Dirty camper. Um, <laughs> But I let everyone else fight it out, and I and I was and I it got to the point where there weren't as many left, and then I pushed them. I got a few kills, but these guys were better, obviously. But that makes sense, you know. It's more tactics. Yes, yes. It's all about that rotating. It's literally it. Like all I showed you guys was nothing special. You can you can do this in a multiplayer. All it is is hey, we're over here, and then you just juke them out by going all the way around and wrapping back. It works like a charm almost every time in warzone is just a matter of like speed and like getting it correct now i do like what you said you said you know sometimes you get into a beautiful power position like what if like we were up here first and then there's an enemy team over here enemy team over here like in this scenario i much rather just like literally camp up here and just get shots down on all the opponents uh because eventually what's going to happen is when you're getting these shots down like, what if we get a down over here? If we get a down over here, we can all fly in third party, and these guys are just so far away that they're gonna be out of the play, right? Um, yeah. And that's even to like literally double down on it. If these guys are fighting each other, you guys can still just stay up here and get shots down because no matter what in ranked play, if you at least hit one bullet on an opponent and they die, you get enough sr as if you just killed them so like you can just camp up here with you and your three teammates shoot across get damage down onto all these enemies you don't get any kills but you get the sr uh for the kills does that make sense yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, awesome awesome okay cool so now the last thing i want to talk about is uh just like gunfights for you individually and for like your teammates um Gunfights in Warzone are really easy if you just make yourself like a ghost. Um, so I'm going to pr pull up an example right now where in the end game, I was able to make it really far towards the end game uh, just based off of like shots, right? So um, let's talk about this where we're in a scenario where I'm forced to rotate. I don't see anyone out on the right. I just get a free kill right there, of course. And then right now, I'm, I still know that on my right side, I'm completely safe. I am completely safe. None of these guys are looking at me, so I'm getting shots. But hopefully you can see, I keep strafing left and right, left and right, because if I get shot, boom. I'm, you know, I'm, boom. Oh, wait. <laughs> if I get shot, boom. I'm, you know, behind cover and I'm safe. So that's why I'm, like, shaking left and right, shaking left and right. And then right here, I realize that these guys are one shot. I can push across, but I'm centering like a hacker. And this is one thing I really want to talk about because this is what like pro players do that make people think they're hacking all the time. And all it is, is I treat this guy like the middle of a clock right here. And as I'm rotating, every single time I jump, turn, look. So I'm rotating, I jump, turn, look. Jump, turn, look. Jump, turn, look. Jump, turn, look. So even though I have to cross this entire open area with no cover, just because I'm sprint jumping, I'm challenging the opponent four different times from four different places. And this is a very important skill to master whenever you're rotating. Um, and this is what all the pros do, because right here, I'm jumping, turning, boom. I get that down, running, jumping, making sure no one's there. Obviously, I throw the grenade. I know they, these guys are down, and then boom, I get to this final spot. And unfortunately, these guys all revived, and they're just camping in here, and like they have a lot of time to like live. Uh, but right there, I just want to showcase the centering like a hacker. Um, now, we're going to go ahead and skip. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Any questions? Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's just good centering. That's blatantly, obviously not hacking. But yeah, I can see why people would think it is. Right, right. <laughs> um, There's no snapping the aim and stuff, so, yeah. 
yeah, this is actually really helping because it's making a lot of sense. You know, Warzone's starting to become more more of a structured thing to me now. Yes, good. Yeah. Good, it's perfect. Like, like, I, like the plane would go, like come out and I'm like, I'm just picking a spot. I mean, I did, I, and now I can <laughs> you know, guess where it's going to end and get close to that. And I would just pick some spot. And now I know why I wasn't getting gunfights. I was too, too damn far away. It's, uh, there you go. Yes, yes. Now, we have the centering like a hacker, which is a very important skill that's going to help you get a lot of kills. I actually have another example to show you later. Uh, but now the next one I want to show you guys is never drop shot in close range gunfights. Whenever you're playing Warzone, drop shotting is the worst thing you can do in an up close range gunfight. And we're about to see that right here. So I'm climbing up the ladder. And at any moment, if I drop shot right there, that guy's aim assist is locking on, getting all headshots. I'm dead immediately. Okay. But what happens instead is because I'm jumping and I'm moving around a lot, this is forcing this guy right here to use his right stick to look up, to pull down, to try to recoil, control recoil. And because of that, he's losing aim assist. So just by me literally jumping over and over again, he's losing so much aim assist. And I won that gunfight with an AR, and he had an SMG. Like, that should never happen. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, but if I drop shot, I'm 100% dead, and that's just because of aim assist. Okay, thank you. No, I'm, I'm glad you said that. Yep. <laughs> now, uh, this next part right here, um, right here, there's an important rule. It's basically don't chase your enemies, cut them off. And right here, I kind of did a bad rule. I chased the enemy instead of cutting him off. And because I chase him right here, I nearly die. Boom. Like, I barely get that kill. And in fact, of course, his teammate's there to, you know, win the trade on me. And those guys are iridescent players. I can't believe they made it that high. <laughs> um, and then right here, I get downed again. So we couldn't see it, but basically what happened was I chased this enemy, I basically die, and then the enemy chased me up the staircase, and because the enemy chased me up the staircase, my teammate got the kill. So in Warzone, it's extremely weird, where you can't drop shot in close range, and you can't chase an enemy, or almost every time you're dead. You have to cut the enemy off. And again, as you guys saw, when I dropped down to you know cut that enemy off, um, I literally almost died. Yeah. All right. Now, the final portion of the game where I just want to showcase centering like a hacker and, of course, my fault, where if I didn't make a simple mistake, I would have won the game for my team. But right here, this is what I mean by centering like a hacker. So um, centering like a hacker is this. I don't see the enemy. I see the enemy shooting right there. I get around court cover. Get behind cover. Boom. Okay, I see the enemy, right? So I saw the enemy right there. And the second that you see an enemy, no matter what, in Warzone, your number one goal is whenever you see an enemy, always get behind cover. Because right now, I'm getting behind cover, and then I'm going to aim at the enemy through the wall, and then I'm going to stand up, and then I'm just going to be able to kill that enemy. Um, but... And what happens here is actually his teammate flies in. So like right here, I'm getting ready. As you can see, I'm aiming through the wall on the enemy, centering like a hacker, getting ready to stand up, getting ready to kill him. And then obviously this guy flies in, so I get like a free kill. But I know this guy's still here. Boom, look at that. I jump up, centering like a hacker. I would have killed this guy if he was still there, but now he's running. I get another down, and then this is my fault. This is the biggest fault I ever made. Once I get this down... I need to immediately start frying this guy. But because I went for a full kill like that, I just immediately get melted by this guy. I get melted so fast, my game lagged because I died so fast. I'm full plates. This guy, like, I get first shot on this guy, by the way. I'm not going to kill him, but I get first shot. See, I get first shot. He doesn't even have a shot on me, but because I didn't get behind cover, look how fast he kills me. Right? And like, this is where it doesn't make sense because it feels like I'm playing a script. Like, it literally feels like Call of Duty is scripting your game where I was supposed to lose this gunfight, like, no matter what. 
because like I, I just I, I just can't I'm, I'm in disbelief like yes I do lose this gunfight but like my goal was hey right here I get first shot before he gets first shot the second he hits me with one bullet I'm gonna get behind cover but I just immediately just get melted and like I, like I said I got melted so fast my game literally froze like right now it's frozen and I think uh, again it's just I don't know um, obviously the easy fix should have been I just simply turn look kill him but uh, I didn't do that but I will in the future okay that concludes the class for Warzone uh, any final questions no I've got loads to do and I'm going to play Warzone tomorrow now heck yeah about and, and the Beko's been talking about it as well so perfect yeah. Yeah, so I can go in there and be a lot more helpful to him. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's um, I'm really enjoying my journey with this game. It's uh, it's so it's so interesting. Like I, if I I'll play, I mean, be kind of like a double act now. We play together a lot, which is really good. Um, and then when I don't play with him and I solo queue, the lobbies are so much easier. <laughs> There's such a di the level differences in this game. I, I don't even want to imagine what the iridescent guys are like to play. Um, just because obviously Biko's like a couple of levels up for me at the moment. So when we play together, I I mean, it's benefited me a lot. So I can't moan because um, I've improved quickly. But then when I solo queue, the difference in the gameplay is, is astounding. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's been fun. And this and I, now Warzone makes a bit more sense. I've got some stuff to practice. I think it would just make me a better rounded 